Hello and welcome to another episode of the CM Kosaman Spontaneous Random Travel Special. We are here with part two of our episode about exploring cities. Extra tips for exploring cities. Now, if you just started watching from this video, know that this is a long and kind of rambling series about basically my personal travel experience and how you too can turn travel into a kind of spontaneous adventure in which you are by yourself and you have full control of your time. You have no appointments, no places to be, no nobody ruling your use of time. And it's a special kind of travel, kind of distinct from other touristic or business travels. Because if you're traveling touristically, like you have to make reservations, go somewhere. Or like if you're in a work trip, well, then, you know, it's a work trip. But in this kind of travel, you can do many things. And please follow the links on the recommended sections or go look at my other videos to see the first part. It's really entertaining. I talk about everything from what to pack to the different kinds of trips you can have to how you can travel in trains and buses and stuff. So there. Now this is part six, I think, or maybe seven, but it's the second part of my like chapter about exploring cities. Because in my previous chapter, I just realized I'd left some stuff out. So just just before getting a summary, let me just remind you to support me on Patreon.com. If you support me on Patreon.com, not only do you make this kind of selfless task kind of feel better for me, because I don't monetize my YouTube, my only revenue comes from you, dear Patreon supporters. And there's also stuff in it for you, like you can see my secret childhood speculative evolution drawings, the concepts which later led to All Tomorrows and Snyad. And day by day I post special content only for Patreon. So if you support me there, even for a dollar a month, you will be rewarded. So let's take a sip of Cosman coffee. Uh, and talk about where we were. Basically, I was just talking about these specific urban trips in which you get to a new city without maybe having been there before and you kind of explore it in your own ways. And in my previous video, I basically discussed this kind of vacation or this adventure as this kind of you yourself. You probably check into a hotel. It doesn't need to be a fancy place. It could be like a three-star hotel, as long as it's got a nice bed to sleep in, some modicum of privacy, and also a kind of you know bathroom and basic breakfast. You're set. You don't need to be really fancy. And if you walk around different cities, you'll find there are quite a lot of cozy alternatives. Anywhere, anyways, last episode was like half an hour long, and... After recording it, I realized, God damn, I forgot a lot of things. So let's go over them one by one. The first thing is about Airbnbs and hostels. Now, a lot of people, when they travel to different towns or cities, they would maybe choose a hostel or maybe if they're this kind of bourgeois bohemian tribe, they get a fucking Airbnb. But now this is just my personal opinion. But this is my personal channel. So I really strongly recommend against both of these options. I'll tell you why. If you get an Airbnb, you get the same freaking hassles as basically living in your house. You have to wash the dishes. Maybe even do the laundry. Leave the place clean. Be, be at a specific time, at a specific place. And it's kind of annoying. You have to meet the freaking guy who has the key. But then he has the wrong key. So you have to wait for him to get... No. And also, you have to basically cook your own breakfast, which in these travels, it's always a hassle. I think food is generally a hassle, and like having to cook your own food in the mornings is the biggest hassliest hassle of them all. So I vote against Airbnbs, plus they're overpriced, and 
all these Airbnbs all around the world, they are kind of converging on this like shit global white collar style, don't you think? Like there's this like poor cactus on the corner, this kind of hipstery Norwegian IKEA furniture, this maybe some shitty neon signs that say life or like just go or stuff like that on it. I mean, it's this generation's live, laugh, and love kind of bullshit, you know? So strongly against Airbnbs. Also, I advise against hostels because even though they're far cheaper than, a, let's say, a, even a two-star hotel, you still don't have a kind of privacy. And believe me, like, privacy, you really need it in these travels. You you walk through a city the whole day, you visit botanical gardens, go to second-hand bookshops, just walk around aimlessly. And when you come back, you really want to kick up your feet. And, you know, you don't want some kind of person next to you saying, My friend, is it your time to use the bathroom now? Okay. I think I draw the line. Like, the hotel can have, like, cobwebs in it. It can be dusty, oldy, smelly. I don't care. But you need to have your own bathroom. And you need to have your own space. So, for these regions... For these reasons, I cross out hostels as well. The best option is the middle brow option. That is to say, just get off the train station, walk around the hotel district a bit, maybe just, you know, sit down, get a bottle of water, rest, and then walk around. Look at hotels one by one. Maybe ask to see the rooms, you know. Nobody will punish you if you don't like it. Like, ask to see the rooms if you feel like it, and there's some like something really clicks in you like if you feel like this hotel is good enough for you just say okay i'm getting this hotel and then just st start staying there another trip tip i forgot to recommend is that some cases it might be more useful to pay with cash so maybe do some research beforehand and get some cash sometimes hotels even do like discounts if you pay by cash so always ask about this and unless you're in a western country like even if you are in a western country actually hotels rather than leaving a room open for that night if you come in the week in during the weekdays basically like if you come in walk in, the, in a tuesday evening and if you ask if you have if they have spare rooms and they say okay we have a, a room available for i don't know like I don't know the price is 60 euros or whatever and if you say look I'll only be here or you might say I will be here for three nights if you do for like 50 per night I'll pay you by cash and usually rather than leaving the room open they actually take this option so find a neat cozy three-star hotel haggle a bit you know I mean it usually works and if you pay with cash it also works. If you're also in another country, if you just arrive there and they straight up charge your credit card, sometimes you might have credit card problems. And it's in these travels, it's always better to use your credit card for daily expenses like food or groceries or the Snickers and Twix bars I recommended you to buy in my first video about exploring cities. So that's also out of the way. Okay, another hack. Pack in a freaking sandwich Tupperware box. You know those like little flat plastic boxes? The cheaper the better because it's light. Just needs to have a lid and enough space for a sandwich inside. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do the good old CM Cozman lunch sandwich switcheroo hack. In this case, you go down to the breakfast. Next day you check into your hotel Everybody's like chick, 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 eating. What you do, usually in most hotels these days, there's enough stuff for you to actually make a little sandwich. Or if they're serving like fresh cut up fruit, also you could pack up on that. Now, you take your fancy sandwich box, make a sandwich, wrap it in a napkin, and also pack it in. Now, Bingo, you have free lunch. You don't need to waste like goddamn, I don't know, goddamn $20 on a, 
on a plate of spaghetti carbonara. You know what I'm saying? You're like fit. You can eat that shit on the go. Maybe like complement it with some strawberry milk you'll buy from a local supermarket. And you're set to go. You can explore the city all day long. So I really recommend this hack. If you're like really bald, actually get two sandwich packs. Make a sandwich in one and pack in the fruit or the pastries they have for breakfast in the other one. So you just eat and go, eat and go, eat and go. That's the way we evolve people. Snack and walk around. And it really saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle and a lot of money. So that's another recommendation I can give you. Also, like when you go into your room, you know, ah, very fresh. You want to take your coat off, your bag off, your shit off. Here's a neat trick. I think German people even have a name for this. And it's like, I think called a readiness chair or something like this. But I forgot the exact words. If there are any German listeners, please enlighten me. What you do is when you take your clothes off, you don't actually throw them on the bed or make a mess. No, you actually layer by layer find a chair. Take off your coat first, put it on there. Take off your hoodie, put it on your coat. Take off your pants, put it on your hoodie. Take off your socks, put it on your pants. You know what I'm saying? So the inverse order in which you wear them, take them off and lay them over this chair. And then then park your backpack there as well. Unpack on a chair. This is called a readiness chair. And if you have like a good expedition praxis, a, a good practice, what you can do is you can just shower twice every day, once before bed, once in the morning. And then you can actually wear a single change of clothes for two or three days straight. Especially if you're like a scentless guy like myself. I'm a skinny guy. I don't sweat much. I don't smell much. I don't have body odor. So in that case, I can like keep a t-shirt going for two days straight or even three days straight. Now, another trick actually is to... You can wash your own shit. Did you know that? What you do is, basically, you go to the supermarket. Now, the, your, the supermarket, and the cheaper the better. The cheap supermarket is your best friend when you're exploring an alien city. Find one out. Ask the reception guys. I don't know. Find one out and, like, go there. What you're going to go get there from there is you're going to get one of those cheap shampoos that have menthol in it. It could be head and shoulders or it could be one of those like knockoff brands called hair and scalp. Generally, there is like it's a cruel, stupid, evil and classist marketing trick. There is no difference in TRs between shampoos and toothpaste. Get the cheapest shampoo, get the toothest, get the toothest cheap paste, get the cheapest toothpaste. And they will keep you as clean and as as hygienic as any other expensive brand. What you're going to do is you're going to get the menthol shampoo, okay? And then maybe also get some cologne. When your t-shirts start getting gamey, gamey game, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your hotel bathroom. You're going to put the plug in the sink. You're going to fill that up, put that t-shirt in there. Give that bastard a good soaking with the menthol shampoo and like also squirt in some cologne in there. And then squish, 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 wash, wash, wash. Soap that bitch up. Then also squish, 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 rinse, rinse, rinse. Also rinse that bitch up and then hang it up to dry. And this is like a really well working alternative. You could use it for your underwear, you could use it for your t-shirts, you could use it for your panties, boxers, socks, especially. You change a lot of socks when you're walking and I'm afraid like the sock is the most fungible item on these expeditions. But if you wash them in this fashion with menthol shampoo and cologne, they feel really fresh, they don't smell. And you can like wear them for like months before you take them home. And give them a proper laundry washing. So there's another trip trick. Don't forget about the CM Kozaman cologne and mantle shampoo laundry trick. If you're listening so far, 
I just want you to know it's a trick I have against the algorithm. I just want you to write, I washed my socks, Cosm and Daddy. Just type it up in the comment section so I get some comments rolling and maybe we can together join forces and beat the algorithm. All right, any other city tricks? Let's see. These are all life hacks, by the way. Good life hacks too. Okay, in most hotels, you will find this like paper or cotton hotel slippers. Uh, these are the best things in the world. A, a really good alternative I have, when you're going down to the breakfast in the morning, don't have a shower, wash and go down. What you do is you get up. Remember, in episode two, I told you what to pack. So you basically pack this like long jumper, you know, these long pant like things, but they're like sweatpants. Okay. Wear that long sweatpants and then on your feet, wear the hotel slippers. Off. That's the best and coziest feeling. Just walk down to the breakfast fucking that way. You don't need to be dressed up. Nobody's going to judge you. You just need to be there. Okay, don't look like a like tramp either. Like wash your face. And it's another CM Cosman trick. If you're a guy, always shave every day. It should be like something that keeps you in discipline. When you're exploring cities or having adventures, like it really pays to look presentable and nice. You could wear a hoodie and a t-shirt all the same. You could wash them in the sink all the same, but like you have to have a clean face. It's just the way societies and people are wired. I didn't make the rules, but if you're a guy and if you're clean shaven, like you could like, remember I told you how you could haggle for hotel prices. It works better when you're a clean shaver, shaven guy or, or a lady. I mean, if you're a lady, it works. But if you're a guy and you've got kind of like this un fuzzy face and something people just don't trust you if you're by yourself and it's just the way society is wired so shave and put on your hotel slippers mm, go down to the breakfast place have your breakfast then before going out you come back up you make a ready-made coffee on, on the kettle most hotels have kettles and sets of ready-made coffee if they don't have them you have to buy them the cheapest, weirdest local brands of ready-made, dissolvable, instant coffee. <sniffs> oh, that's the best thing. Oh, I like that thing so much. The cheaper, the weirder, the better. It's like... <sighs> better than bareback. Anyways, oh, so good. Uh, I'm drinking one such instant coffee right now. Anyways, you go back up you make your coffee or maybe tea watch the local tv channels and just relax then you can take your shower get ready go out remember you're not in a hurry you don't need to rush anywhere it's one of the most beautiful things about such vacations i usually manage to get up at like 7 a.m go down to the breakfast Maybe get a book, actually. I always carry a paperback book to read, by the way. If you didn't listen to my previous episodes, you would probably know that I don't do smartphones. I hate them. And even if you do use smartphones, never take one along on one of these trips. It, they destroy your they destroy your self-confidence, your attention span. They're, I think like they should be banned. They're like cigarettes. Have a computer and work from a computer. That's okay. Have a laptop. But smartphones, no fucking way. And don't even get me started about these miserable ant people who are walking the streets on a... Huh, where's the restaurant? Where's the tapas bar? Tapas bar? Which way? Left? Right? Ugh, don't be those people. Those people may not be evil, but uh, they've just fallen so deeply into the techno, techno rabbit hole that there's just no hope for saving them. So sad. Anyways... That's just some of my rants. You just have to take them as they come. So I wake up 7 a.m., go down to the breakfast, have a long, sumptuous breakfast. I pack my lunches in my lunch boxes. I read my book, then come back up at like 8, 8.30, have a sumptuous shower. Or here's another CM Cosman trick. Most hotels, 
have bathtubs, okay? Use that bitch. You fill it with foam. It's there for your enjoyment. Fill it to the brim. Oh, get in there like a slimy sea otter. Off, wash the filth. It really helps immersing yourself in warm water. Especially if you're traveling during the winter, it really helps. If you're traveling the, during the winter and you're a guy, I also recommend you get like a short haircut so that drying your hair is easier. Always wear like a, a, a wool cap. It really keeps your ha hair warm. If you're a lady, uh, just dry your hair or get a short haircut too. That thing really looks hot in, in ladies. Anyways, use the bathtub. It's there for your use, okay? So rest, take it easy, and like around 10 a.m., 11 a.m., you're, you're ready to go out, explore the city. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now I got some more notes, actually. Also, before going out, hydration is also really important. I talked about food in the previous episode about exploring the cities, so I'm not going to go in there, but you always have to eat, basically. Eat on the go. Now you also packed your lunch. Hydration is also really important. I always carry like one of those medium-sized bottles of water. You know, not the tall ones, but not the short ones either. But there are these like chunking, funkin' middle like 750 milliliter bottles. I, I just find I just find them from a shop and I just keep refilling that, refilling that. And a good hack actually when you're exploring a city is Get that chunky funky bottle of water, even if you're not sick, even if you're feeling all right, chuck a little aspirin in there and then chuck a tablet of vitamin C in there. Sh uh, let the gas go out, shake it. If you, if you shake it with the cap on, it will explode because gas builds up. So avoid that. So get that like aspirin, vitamin C, water mix and drink that on the go. It look, it's going to look like piss, but it will taste really well and it it will really vitalize you. Drink, drink, drink as you walk. Especially if you're in a summer, if you're conducting operations in summer climate, uh, refill that bottle as you go. So another recommendation. Now, here is a trick about exploring. Now, we talked about exploring cities a lot, but let me get a bit more deeper into the nitty gritty of this shit. Basically, you're going to have unplanned journeys through the um, uh, urban landscape. Now, we talked about highlight places to go, like bookshops, second-hand bookshops, botanical gardens, museums, or maybe old districts of the town. I don't know, like places you could walk to. Go to places which you like and don't go to places because they're touristic. Like, if the city has a fashion museum and a Picasso museum okay and you got one day you don't need to go to the fashion museum if you don't like fashion or skip the Picasso museum if you're into fashion you know what I'm saying you don't have to see everything and another important part of your travels should be to have these unplanned walks through the streets and you look at things from a different perspective like personally one of my neatest memoirs in recent times that was my travel to the Turkish city of Izmit, and I Izmit is like a Jersey city. I mean, in, in, in a Turkish context, it's not a very extraordinary place if you live here. But what I did was, I sat down at a Burger King, ordered some coffee, because Burger King and McDonald's really do coffee and tea and chocolate milk at really competitive prices, like for like literally one-fifth the price of a fancy buttfuck cafe, you can get a decent cup of coffee from Burger King. I got my Burger King cafe, sat down at the Burger King. It was 10 a.m. during a weekday. Everyone was going to work. And I sat and I just watched people. Because I'm also a photographer, I use my camera to take like snapshots of daily life. And because I'm also running this YouTube channel, you could also find a video of my t trip to Izmit from back then. And I also shot some video just from that Burger Burger King Rookery place, you know. And you can just pass the time. Also just 
you know, go into these weird corners of the town. In most parts of the world, even if you're a lady, no one's going to hurt you. Although if people want to be your friend insistently, just learn to say no. Practice this, like, say, like, sorry, I got somewhere to be. Maybe next time. And this is a good option. Maybe next time. Not now. Like, it's going to sound silly, but practice saying these things aloud. And then no one will disturb you. You know, be be open-minded, but don't be naive. That's the deal. And I, you really see a lot of weird details. Like, because I'm also interested in bugs and stuff, like, I, I, I look at this old wall and there are like little snail shells in the wall or like snails or like strange moss growing there. I go turn to this back street. There's this like weird shop that used to sell birds, but the sign is left over from 2006 and it's kind of like weathered. And because I'm a photographer, these are always like golden stuff to photograph. So it's this unusual and extraordinary way of looking at ordinary places that I really suggest you practice. The French even have a word for this. It's called a derive, but it's spelled derive, but the first E is the French E with the little hat or pip on it. You know what I mean? And it was formulated by this French social theorist called Guy Debord. And I mean, there from there on, you could go on to a lot of theoretical side tangents you know there's this whole area of psychogeography in which you like kind of go to like psychogeographical states of the mind but i don't like diving too deep into this basically it's not following a schedule exploring your own way and focusing on everyday details in your own perspective and using this input to make art as an artist and photographer, it's really inspiring. I mean, I go to these strange back alleys, sit down at a derelict cafe, and then when I draw a aliens that way, it's always 100% far more inspiring. If you're a poet or something, it also will be inspiring. If you're a photographer, who? I mean, I don't take pictures of landmarks. Millions of people take pictures of the landmarks. Take pictures of like those like weird balconies, that strange one-eyed dog, that strange kind of like kinky, almost slutty, dusty old underwear lingerie shop in the back alley of that one Greek town. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I live, I live for that shit. If you also live for that shit, you'll have a good time. So that's the whole derive angle covered and taking photographs. Also, another, like, okay, when you're exploring a new city, especially if you come with air travel, because that thing is a goddamn, like, incubator of bacteria and viruses and shit, you might fall sick. Even if you don't come with a, an airplane, if you go to a new city and you kind of, like, you wear yourself out with your social experiences and all that. You kind of get tired, okay? And when this happens, you might get sick. Now, you always have to have, like, sickness preparedness. And because of this, I recommended the vitamin C and aspirin bottle cocktail trick. But also, always pack things like lamb sip or that like Tylol hut in your bag like pack if you're gonna have all the sicknesses at the same time and hope you never get to use them but pack something for like an upset stomach pack something for fever pack ibuprofen and um, paracetamol these come under different brands you also might want to get like a basic sort of antibiotic people used to prescribe them for cold and yes, there's all this thing about antibiotic resistance, but fuck that, you know. You're not going to contribute to antibiotic resistance if you take a uh, drop uh, augmentin while you're sick on a, on a personal travel. So if you can get antibiotics, get them too. In the first sign of sickness, if you feel a little sore in your throat, just hit it with all you got. Like the American, as the American philosopher 
John Rogan once said, I threw the kitchen sink at it. So throw the kitchen sink at it. Drop ibuprofen. Drop paracetamol. Drink a lot of water. Drink uh, an extra dose of vitamin C. Even if you're a little sick, hit it with everything you got. And then go to bed early that night. If you still feel kind of sick, maybe like stay indoors until the noon and take an easy walk. If you're building up a fever or if you have a sore throat, then spend that day in the hotel. Maybe just go out for a brief walk, sleep during the day. I know that day's hotel fare will kind of be wasted, but believe me, you will feel better. Also, if you're kind of feeling sick, always now spend money on like proper meaty foods. Like go to a go to a local, like hopefully you will be in a country that does humane food and not in a place like the US or England. But if you're in the Mediterranean country, go to a restaurant of home cooked meals. Drink chicken soup or meat soup or bone soup. Now those are real like God's own medicine on top of the medicine you already took. Hit that antibiotics. I don't fucking care. Then retire to your hotel and have an early night's sleep. And hopefully, hopefully you'll get better. Also, if you take these trips for the first time, you might feel anxious and stressed out. It's a very natural thing. If that happens, I mean, it happened to me when I was first taking these trips and I felt so lonely. I felt lost. But then, fuck that, I'm going to go back anyways. Remind yourself this is not going to kill you. You're probably a future version of yourself is already remembering this with a sense of bliss and nostalgia. And try to maintain a positive attitude. Don't fall back on your online connections. And like, like don't get lost on the internet. Although if you pack the laptop, maybe in the evening, turn on the laptop or go to an internet cafe. Don't pack a laptop, but go to an internet cafe and write an email to someone you love or someone in your family or someone you want and write an email to them. It will be very romantic and say, hey, I just took this weird trip to, I don't know, this little town in Pennsylvania. It's really strange. I'm missing you. Here are some pictures, blah, blah. It's a really nice way to alleviate stress. Anyways, so that's my tricks. If you're sick or if you're wistful, do those. And also you could do like really wild stuff. Like you could wake up at 3 a.m. and just walk around the city that way. Things like that are like really great adventures that not even people in that city get to enjoy. So I strongly recommend that. And when it comes to leave, when time comes to leave or may basically... Also another recommendation, like if you're in a long trip, like if you got maybe like more than 10 days to burn or like if you suffered some misfortune or an adventure i don't know like imagine you're driving through a certain part of a certain country and then you i don't know your car had a flat tire on the road and you had a like stressful moment and something if that happens try to reward yourself when you drive into town don't stay at the cheapest hotel but maybe check in for one night into the four star hotel the ramada in the marriott the shit like that holiday in and then it feels like like if you have a misfortune or an adventure balance that off with a kind of treat to yourself so those are the tricks i can recommend you and when time comes to check out always make your bag beforehand so you don't feel a hassle also you can also always call these hotel lobbies and say i'm checking out late is that okay most cases it will be okay anyways these are cosman tips for uh further exploring cities i hope you enjoy these trips and i hope you're enjoying the series it's still gonna go on for a while i, f I still have to talk about social life in these adventures and it's gonna be the spiciest and zingiest episode so far because i'm gonna be talking about dating and shit hope you're looking forward to it and hope you had a good time and i hope you find it in yourself to support me on patreon.com if you have 
If you're inspired by these theories and have similar trips yourself, please write to me. I really enjoy those. And with that in mind, have a nice day. This has been CM Kozeman. Goodbye.